Welcome to One on One on God 101. Our guest today is Caleb Reynolds from Big Brother 16. Caleb, we have a lot to catch up on. I think it's been about a decade. Right at, know. yeah. But first, but first God. That's Did right. You, that's oh, right? I know you put the Lord in first place. I know you know the Lord. But what I'm curious to hear is, did you always know the Lord? Did you grow up with faith in your life? Yes. Uh, crazy enough, I, I didn't. There's a lot about my childhood I didn't really share on Big Brother. I mean, I may have shared it, um, but I grew up a pastor's kid. You know, I uh, my dad was a veteran. And after uh, he got out of the army, he became a pastor. So I, I grew up in church. Um old school, like Baptist style, you know, church. And I, I could think back on the days where like I had like such a small church that if I was acting up, my dad would like call me to the front of the church and correct me in front of everyone and then make me sit on the front row. Um, but I did, I, I've, I've known God ever since I can uh, uh, remember. Um, but obviously over the years, uh, as you grow older, um, and you start to understand who God really is. You you grow differently in your walk with God, and so. But yeah, to answer that, yes, I've known. I've pretty much had a relationship with God my whole life. Now, this is very fascinating to me because um, people who grow up as a ch a child of a pastor, they call them PKs, right? Pastor kids. Pastors kids, yeah. Pastors kids, and it could go one of two ways, right? You can run towards it, or you can rebel because you feel like. I'm not giving a, I'm not given a choice or, or voice here. Right. Did right. you ever, did you ever rebel or, or turn your back on it and then find your way back? Me, I, I never turned away from it. Um, I wouldn't say, I would say one of the main reasons is I, I watched all, I was the youngest of four boys and I would always watch them screw up. Um, so I was being the younger brother, um, and I'm like, man, you like in my head, you know, you're like, man, we're pastor's kids, bro. Like you can't be acting like that. Well, my brothers were kind of on their own walks and, uh, I always watch them screw up. So watching them screw up, I was always the one that was like, I'm not going to make the same mistakes they're making. Now, granted peer pressure and everything else, just like any other young kid in school, uh, hits, but I never fell into the peer pressure of kids, um, I don't think rebelling was something I would have ever done more so because I was afraid of how my dad would act less care about, you know, what God would think of me. Um, it was more so of a man, if I do something wrong, my dad's going to wear my hind end out and not think about, you know, what people may look at me as if I make this decision, how would they, cause I lived in a small town. So, how people would look at me. Everyone knew my dad was the pastor and we were known as the pastor's kids, four boys, pastor of a church. And, you know, so messing up was an option for us, uh, especially four boys all a year apart. Um, but yeah, rebelling for me, wasn't really a thing. Um, just simply because I was always afraid to disappoint my mom. And, you know, again, when you're young, you don't have that relationship with God that you do as you get older. And it's, when you're younger, you're so worried about letting your parents down and how your parents will perceive you if you make a dumb decision or rebel. Um, but, you know, in my head, I've, I've always chosen God over everything, even as a kid. So rebelling wasn't really a, a thing for me. What was the small town? What state and town? It was Katie's, Kentucky. Um, and that is C-A-D-I-Z. And I graduated with like 60 something people. So it was very, very small knit town, two stoplights in the entire town. So it's one of those towns, like if you sneezed, everyone knew you sneezed that day. <laughs> How old were you when you decided to give your life to Christ? Oh, man, as young as I can remember, um, six, seven, baptized at six or seven. But, you know, again, I, I like to backtrack on six and seven. Did I really understand what being baptized was? I can say now as an adult, I didn't really know. Like for me, I thought this guy's going to dunk me under the water. I'm going to come up and be made new. And the past is behind me and I'm a new creation. And, and you know, you, you 
you think of that at, at, in a kid's standpoint. For me, I'm like, yeah, I'm getting dunked in the water. But what it meant in my heart was, hey, like, this is what I want. Like, this is biblical. Like, you know, I want Jesus to live in me, be with me. And, you know, I want to confess on my sins and I want him to walk with me every day. And so that for me was a step in the process of God being with me forever. So I'd done it because of what it meant to me as a kid. Hmm. You're 35 years old right now. Yes. Yes, ma'am. You were in your mid twenties when you moved into the big brother house, you competed in big brother 16. That was the season that Derek Lavasser won, who mm -hmm. made it through the whole summer, not revealing to any of you that he was actually an undercover uh, police detective. Right. Um, why did you sign up for Big Brother? Where were you in life in your faith book, faith walk? And why did you do it back then? Um, I was fairly fresh home uh, a few years post deployment. Um, I was in college um, working as a prison guard. Uh, didn't really know where life was going to take. At the time, God was almost non existent for me. Um, he was, I was far off. I was like such of, you know, being deployed and, and trying to maintain who you really are in the process of all that is a whole different ball game. Um, but if you were like me, getting closer to God on my deployment was like my, was what saved me. It was like, a, you know, the gym and God was like, that was it for me. So I came home, um, obviously was battling a lot from that and trying to revert back into the civilian way of life and started working at the prison, um, got in with some good people, but I think I, I definitely could have done better. But in the moment of big brother 2014, um, I could say that I, I know God knew who I was, but I feel like I was so far. I, I wasn't able to hear his voice. I felt that I could have done better. I felt that, um, I've strayed. I've strayed away. Um, and, you know, at the end of the day, it's like, man, the, the one guy, when you watch like The Passion of Christ, for instance, it's like when you watch that movie and see all that he went through. For, and, I, and I at the moment, I push everyone else out of the way. And it's like, man, what he done for me as an individual. You know, all, yes, he done it for all of us. But it was a, a breaking moment um, right before Big Brother where I literally said to myself, like, all that he's done for me. He died for me and practically I'm sitting here dying from, you know, I'm, I'm so involved in the world that I'm forgetting what Jesus done for me, you know? And so at the big brother moment, single for seven years, um, kind of being off my rocker a little bit, kind of wanting to do my own thing and thinking that I can go through this life. Um, you know, way well, look, I, I was saved when I was a kid. I'm still saved now. I'm just going to kind of do my own thing and be of the world. Um, right when I went into Big Brother and then obviously coming out, it was a whole different ball game. Uh, but going in, I definitely was far. Which branch of the military were you in? I was in the Army. And when you were deployed, was it to Afghanistan? Talk to me about your deployment. Like, how long were you there? Where were you? I, I went to... A Kuwait first. Um, uh, my whole deployment as a whole, from the moment I left, went to Kuwait. We transferred over to Baghdad. Um, so I was in Iraq uh, for 11 months. And then and back what to Kuwait. Was I was in Iraq in 2009. Wow. And now, how was that? It how was... Um, I actually volunteered for the deployment, so it wasn't something that was thrown up at me last minute. Um, I just said to myself, like, if this is where I'm at, like, I want to be able to say, like, I've done something for my country. And um, again, I grew up a military brat, too. My dad was in. Two of my older brothers were in. So when I went in, I was like, I'm just following their footsteps and, and I just want to do this. So I volunteered. And it was one of those moments where you just have to grow up. You know, like when I deployed, I was living at my mom's and um, even when I went into Big Brother uh, from the entry video, I still lived at my mom's at, you know, 24, 25 years old. And um, it was difficult at times because a lot of people 
if a tragedy happens, it's all like, God, why would you allow this? And I feel like that when you're in situations, those that's your like first instinct is you just want to blame it on God. You know, it's like, man, I just blame him because he could have stopped all this. And I feel like that's where I was. It's almost like the gloves are off, God, you know, moments overseas and, uh, you know, because more happened. I was dating a girl at the time. She started talking to someone else when I left. And, you know, I, so I just blamed it all on him. And I was like, God, if, if you loved me, why would you let her find someone else? You know, if you loved me, why would this be happening? And so that was my mentality overseas is, look, I'm alone. I don't know any of these people I'm with because I volunteered to be here. I attached to a different unit out of Texas and like I'm here, you know, hopefully you're here with me instead of being like, God, I know you're with me. I know you're walking every footstep with me. And, and, and that's how my response should have been. But it wasn't because um, I was going through my own tragedies within the deployment that I felt that he was just letting me down. So going into the deployment, I was once again, um, I knew God had my back always. And I know he's an on time God. And but I also still knew that we've got our own stuff to bear, too. We've got our own cross to carry. Um, so a little far, but would still call on him, um, would still feel like I never got an answer, would still feel like I never heard anything. Um, but also at the end of the day, I, I was living by faith. When did you start um, changing your heart and opening your eyes and feeling and seeing him now you know he was there the whole time yeah um you know on my deployment i can't say um i was struggling with some anxiety and depression uh, a little bit overseas i was meeting uh with the chaplain there and you know i would meet with him and i was still trying to to get to church and you know i i can't say on my deployment i felt like i did i feel like my mind was so wrapped up in everything else I had going on. I mean, you know, I was working 14 to 16 hour days, six days a week. And so I didn't really have a lot of time to do much, uh, to even, I had, I had time to sit and pray, but I just wouldn't, I would read my Bible for 10 or 15 minutes and I would be like, I'm just so tired. So I would just go to sleep. But I would say like, when I got home, um, I got back in church and that was one of the moments where I felt like, um, personally, there was a church service that I was at and I was just cried out to God. And in the moment, you know, like if you just that you're sitting at church and it's almost like he's speaking directly to you. And it's like you just feel not just like the cold chill, but it feels like you're being wrapped up. And it was one of those moments where I was just crying out and I was like, God, I know you're real, but I don't feel you around me. Like, I don't feel you near me. I don't feel that you're in the air I'm breathing. I don't feel you. And I want to feel you. Like, I, you know, like I've, I've been told to cry out my whole life. And finally, I give in and I cry out. I'm here on my knees. I'm crying out to you. Just, just hold me, you know, take over me. Just love me. And in that, in that specific uh, church service, I did feel that embrace. I felt that he was in the very air I was breathing. I felt he was in the room and I felt, I got the chills and it felt like wings just wrapped around my body. And I was like, there you are. Like I've wanted this forever. And that, that was the moment where I felt like, you know, cause you're, we're not supposed to test God, you know, like, God, if you're real, make that tree come out of the ground. You know, people have this crazy, uh, they have these crazy thoughts on, you know, they want to test God. God, if you're real, do this. God, if you're, and for me, it was like, God, I know you're real, but I want to feel you more. I want to be in your midst more. And that was kind of the turning point for me post deployment was when I was home and I got settled in and I just cried out to him. I was like, God, I'm just, I'm at my wits end because I have yet to feel you. And I just finally cried out enough. And I was like, God, this is it for me. Like, man, you got to wrap me up because faith is difficult. You know, our, our Christianity, like being a Christian is not easy. And, you know, you can lose sight of everything so fast because if you're, if you don't feel close to him, 
it's like, is he even here? You know, and that's where you have to live by faith and not by sight. And um, I want to continue this conversation. Yeah. Gonna, hi, everyone. We are continuing our conversation with Caleb Reynolds from Big Brother 16. He is talking to it talking to us about his faith walk and Caleb where we left off was um, the moment where you felt literally like almost like wings wrapping around you um, God's presence. I am curious to hear if um, your whole experience in the big brother house, what was your prayer life like inside the house? Cause oh. it looks like fun and games, but it's very trying. Yeah. Um, I think there were certain moments in the house, you know, I would um, revert to this. I, I would always see Amber reading her Bible and it would always take me back to like, golly, man, like that used to be me. Like, why am I not picking up a Bible in times like this? And in times where you're in a house with a bunch of lunatics and you don't know who they are and uh, everyone's trying to lie to you, backstab you and, and, you know, in this chaotic game that I'm in, like, this is when, like, this is where God, God's going to speak to me in here. And it's like, you know, uh, so I would see her reading her Bible and it would just edge me to want to read mine. And there were times where I did, I could have done better for sure. Um, but I would say six out of 10, probably in the house. I just, I feel like you get so wrapped up in the game. You forget a lot of other things that are important. Um, and, you know, obviously Jocasta in the house as well was, um, she would remind you often, you know, and so it could have been better, but obviously, you know, I, I still, I prayed. Um, I still, I would read my Bible at times. Um, so, I mean, it was there. It wasn't well, non-existent. A few years later, you sign up and do Survivor. Yep. Can't bring your Bible on that, correct? No, no Bibles. What was your prayer life then? Because that was Ooh. what? Uh, what year was that? Um, that was the year after. So I was on there 2015 and then 2016, I believe. Hey, Julie, can I plug my phone in? Because it's about to die. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Plug right. your phone in. See, this is all live. We just do yeah, one take. Live. Hey, look, you know, it, it's, it, it is what it is. You know, my phone, I'm a normal guy and my phone's died just like everyone else has slipped up. And when you plugged it in, the signal cleared up. So thank you, Jesus. Really? Yeah, a little bit. Oh, all right, look at that. That's um, Yeah. Uh, but um, no, no Bibles at all on Survivor. Um, prayer life. Life there was um, like what? I would say I, at night, um, was probably my strongest prayer life. Um, it, that game pushes you to the, it pushes you to your, uh, your max, um, cold, shivering, no blankets. You know, it was kind of a God, I know you gotta be here. <laughs> if you're not here with me right now, I'm going to freeze to death. So it was, uh, uh, it, it was definitely more so on survivor, uh, than big brother. I, I felt like, um, very, because you got to think going on going on Survivor out, outside of Big Brother. I had a girlfriend, fiance at the time, uh, which is my wife now. Um, I had more to leave behind, so it was a lot harder. I had a a little girl in my life at the time that when I got with Ashley, she you know I not when I got with her, she had a daughter and she just stole my heart. So it was like, man, like I've never had a little girl tug on my heart this much. And on top of that, leaving her, I thought of the moments when I left, she was crying. She didn't want me to go. And, you know, I didn't have that going into big brother. So this was like, man, I like, God, I'm going to need you now, probably more than ever when it comes to a game, because I'm, I was struggling on, on survivor just simply because I was leaving a lot more behind. And I thought like, if, if God is not with me in this show, I'm not the type to give up, but I'm the type to sit back and whine like a baby because I miss everybody. And so for me, it was like, God, all right, this is it. I, I need you right now. I'm freezing for one. For two, I got bugs biting me everywhere. And for three, I miss my family more than anything. And so on Survivor, I, I 
I would have to say I prayed every night um, because I really needed it. All right. Now uh, you and Ashley, ha you're a family of four, right? You have two mm -hmm. beautiful children. Um, what is your prayer life now? Talk to me about where we are today in your faith walk. Well, we are a family of three at the moment. Three, but we do have a fourth one on the way. Oh, another another little girl. Yeah, so Praise we'll God. have three girls in the house and one boy. And Lord, am I going to need him? <laughs> My prayer life is going to be stronger than ever. Oh yes. Uh, um, are we allowed to talk about a due date or no? Um, the first week of August. Wow, fantastic! Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm excited, man. There's, there's nothing like it. Like the, the biggest gift, biggest gift of all, man. Like, it's amazing. As we close this episode, Caleb, um, you are a prayer warrior. I heard you pray before we started recording this episode. Could you please pray for everyone who is listening to this interview right now, um, whether they are or not? Um, could yeah. you end this episode in prayer for us? I would love to. Let's do it. Lord, we humbly come before you uh, once again, God, as we close out this chapter. Uh, God, we we just thank you. Uh, we thank you for being with us. We thank you for listening to us. We thank you for giving us the words that uh, we need to say, God. And uh, God, well, I just pray now that you open the ears and the minds of the people listening. God, and I just pray right now that they get to know you. Uh, Lord, and even in the struggles that I had in the past that I had, the wrongdoings that I've had, uh, God, when I felt that I was furthest from you, at the end of the day, you were actually closest to me. God, and I pray right now, the people that are listening, uh, Lord, and even if they're praying with us right now, God, I just pray that they, they humbly fall to their knees and just ask you, God, just to surrender to you, to die to themselves, God, and I just pray that they get to know you. Um, they pray, they uh, come before you. They leave it all at your feet, God, because we know that in this world, we cannot do it alone. And the majority of everything we deal with is too heavy for us to bear ourselves. So God, we just thank you. We love you. And we know that you are the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the Alpha and the Omega. God, and we just thank you once again for your mercy and your grace on our life. We love you and we thank you in your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Caleb Reynolds from Big Brother 16. Thank you for Thank you for your obedience and your love of God. And thank you for your time. Uh, you're very welcome. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me. God bless your family. You as well, Julie. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.